We are thankful and we appreciate very much your minister, Brother Washington, uh, and for this uh, invitation to appear here again at the Golden Heights Congregation. As I mentioned this morning, I've been here a number of times, and normally in January and sometimes uh, otherwise, but it's always good to come to this city. And I feel welcome and at home. Uh, and after all, my home uh, that I grew up in, St. Augustine Falls, is right down the street. Uh, you can hit it with a rock from here. And uh, so I'm a Florida boy uh, and proud of it. Amen. And again, we are hoping that when we leave here that this church will have been lifted up to some degree uh, as we celebrate clergy month. Uh, and your harvest month theme, open doors, we dealt with that this morning. Uh, and of course we know that God is in the door opening business. Uh, he is yet opening doors for you and for me. Uh, this morning I want to deal with baptism. I want to walk the line uh, regarding baptism uh, and to for you to recognize that the Lord is righteous in all his ways yes, and holy yes, sir. in all his works uh, so we know that God knows what he is doing yes, and as intelligent as you might be God doesn't need your help and if he didn't need you at creation He's shown up, don't need you now. And so we, we just need you to recognize that because I look out in the audience and I do see some intelligent looking folk and so that you might know that. This is the Lord's day. Uh, and the day that the Lord has made, we ought to rejoice and be glad it is. So we want you to leave your problems and difficulties outside just for a moment. Uh, and focus on the word of God which can bless your heart and your soul. Meet me, if you would, at the 8th chapter of the book of Acts. We're going to launch from here, uh, and, and, and then we're going to be all over the place. Uh, but we're hoping that in going all over the place that you will make some discoveries uh, that can help you uh, as you undergo your Christian walk. The book of Acts chapter number 8 and beginning at verse number 8. And there was great joy in that city that is Philippi. But there was a certain man called Simon which before in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria uh, giving out that uh, himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they re had regard, and because that of a long time, he had bewitched them with sorceries. Yes. But when they believed yes, Philip preaching yes, the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And then even Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wonder, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. The beauty and the blessings of baptism. The beauty and the blessings of baptism. Uh, it is beautiful because aesthetically it's easy to look at because uh, it is uh, someone complying with the will of God. Uh, to see someone immersed in water for the forgiveness of their sins is something to behold. 
uh, we consider the third chapter of the book of John. Uh, and the Bible talks about uh, how Jesus conversed with Nicodemus, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Oh, but he can. Uh, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Nicodemus, uh, like many folk today, was looking at the surface. Uh, but when you're investigating the word of God, you have to look below the surface. Amen. Jesus answered, Verily, Verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. And I'm saying to this great audience and all those who are sitting out there now who are unwashed, you must be born again. Amen. You must be born again. And so we recognize the importance of water baptism and the precedent uh, is right here in the book. And we see Jesus communicating this great truth to Nicodemus. In the book of Romans chapter number 6 and verse number 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. And I'm here to tell you this morning that you cannot walk in the newness of life until you have done that which is necessary for the walking. If we're going to be new and transform, baptism is a prerequisite. And so in John... 3 and 23. The Bible talks about how John was baptizing in Enoch near Salem because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. Yes, sir. But I want you to know that before baptism came by way of John, there was uh, the ritual of ablution, uh, the ceremonial ritual cleansing by water. Leviticus 8 and verse number 6 in preparation for the priestly duties, Aaron and his sons were washed ceremoniously in water. Biblically, there are at least seven baptisms spoken of biblically of one, which one rather, is necessary. And that is the one for remission of sin. But there are seven places where we see uh, baptism talked about in one form or another. Baptism uh, in the root word means to be overwhelmed. Uh, it is to be plunged in water. Baptism is a dipping. It is an immersion in water for the remission of sin. But number one, the first one we see on the scene is the baptism of John. John chapter 3 and verse number 23 says what? And John also was baptized in Anon near to Salem. Read. Because there was much there water was there. There was much water there. And they came and were baptized. They came and were baptized. baptized. Now, watch this now, Matthew 3 and verse number 8. Bring forth, therefore, fruit and meat for repentance. Bring forth the evidence that you have repented. Read. And think not to say within yourself, uh -huh. we have Abraham to our fathers. But keep in for mind, baptism by John uh, was baptism unto repentance. And, and, and repentance there was the evidence that y'all have changed so John is saying, let me see the evidence that you have changed. And I'm here to tell you that uh, repentance is one of the things that's necessary uh, to be right with God today. 
And so therefore, when we come, you should come with a heart of contrition. Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm ready for a changed life. And then being able to confess that, and then we'll baptize you in water for the remission of sin. But John's baptism is no longer in force. That was then, and this is now. And then, in the book of Mark, chapter 10, uh, beginning at verse number 35, we see the baptism of suffering endured by the Lord. And I'm here to tell you uh, that some of us are undergoing now the baptism of suffering, overwhelmed by suffering, overwhelmed by bad circumstances, uh, uh, baptized in adversity. Read. And, John, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Watch this now. Come unto him, saying, uh -huh. Master, yes. we would that thou should do whatsoever we shall desire. And so Jesus answered them, what do y'all want? Read. And he said unto them, what would ye have I should do for you? What do you want me to do for you? They said unto him, yes. grant us that we should sit. Uh -huh. One on thy right hand. And you the know other they might have meant well. They might have meant well. They were innocent young men. Read. And the other on the left hand, in thy glory. Uh -huh. But Jesus said unto them, yes. Ye know not what ye ask. You don't know what you ask Can because you, drink you don't realize what I'm getting ready to go through. Amen. Read. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink Can of? Can you drink from this crucifixion cup? Read. And he baptized with the baptism that I have baptized with. Can you with? undergo the scrutiny and the severity and the pain of the cross and all that I'm getting ready to endure, the beatings, the rejection, the mockery, the suffering, and the pain of the cross, can you endure? Uh, and so therefore, there we have uh, the baptism of suffering. And here again, as we look at our own lives, some of y'all have already been baptized with the baptism of suffering. Say amen when you can. Amen. If you've been dealing with some stuff uh, that you can't remove, uh, children who won't obey, uh, yeah, yeah, bills you can't pay, amen. sickness bothering you, there is other things going on in your life incessantly to the extent that looks like you so far down until the ground is up. Suffering and the baptism of suffering. Somebody knows what I'm talking about right now. The baptism of suffering. And so we find that there was such a thing. Uh, and Jesus alluded to that uh, and explained to these young fellows, can y'all do what I'm getting ready to do? Uh, uh, can you undergo uh, the scrutiny uh, and the pain of the cross? Uh, uh, can you put up with this rejection that I'm getting ready to receive? Yes, Are you ready for that? Uh, and can you do it? So we recognize that there is the suffering and the baptism of the same. Amen. We know about suffering. Uh, we know about not having enough. We know about the suffering and the baptism of sickness. Stuff that the doctor can't fix always. Amen. Uh, when the only child you have has been dragged off to jail, a baptism of suffering is 3 o'clock in the morning and you don't know where he is. That's the baptism of suffering. You're wringing your hands because you don't know where this boy is. That's the suffering that only a parent can understand. Thirdly, 1 Corinthians 10, verse number 1 through 4, there is the baptism unto Moses. All right, sir. Uh, read that if you would. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, More of I brethren, would not that ye should be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under all the cloud. All our fathers passed through the cloud. And passed under the 
pass through the sea. Uh -huh. And were all baptized unto Moses in the and cloud all and back in the sea. So Moses and the experience coming out of Egypt was a sort of baptism. Why? Because the water has always been in God's plan. Amen. Water has always been a part of what God uh, has been uh, instructing man to do as it relates to cleansing. And so uh, that was the baptism uh, unto Moses there in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 through 4. That is the baptism unto Moses. Now, and then fourthly, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All right, read that. For John truly baptized with water. For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall water, be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many baptized. days hence. Now that's gone. We're not going to get that. And we know some folk running around here talking about it, but we're not going to get that. That's gone. And don't even concern yourself with that because if you get the one baptism that's necessary now, that can put you in good graces with God. Read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and when the day of Pentecost they was were fully all come, with one accord in one place. Uh -huh, read. And suddenly there came a and sound from heaven as of a, a rushing mighty wind. Uh -huh. And it filled all the house where they the were house. sitting. So now if it read, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues that like as a fire. Now you know what? Now there were some folk who say that this is evidence of being baptized in fire. But the Bible said cloven tongues as of fire. Didn't say it was fire. Y'all see that? Amen. Cloven tongues as of fire, like fire, sat on each of them. them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all and filled. And began to speak with other tongues. And, and the Spirit gave them tongues. utterance. As and the there were dwelling at Jerusalem. Amen. That's good. That's good. Devout. Amen. That's fine. So one, we have the baptism of John. Yes, sir. Secondly, we have the baptism of suffering. Yeah. Thirdly, we have the baptism unto Moses. Yeah. Uh, and the... Fourthly, we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is no more. Amen. And fifthly, uh, there was during those times of uh, the baptism for the dead or the baptism by proxy, which has been false doctrine then and false doctrine now. Uh, because there was some false doctrine moving around, uh, uh, supposing that uh, you could get baptized for somebody who had already died. But that's not Bible. Baptism by proxy, read. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? Yes. If the dead rise not if at the all, dead rise not, why are they that then baptized for the dead? And so that was, that was his practice at that time, it seems. You don't hear much about it. Uh, was well, baptism by proxy. That is, if you had a, 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 an unsaved person who uh, had died, uh, and then you discover uh, the gospel after that, and then some perhaps were getting baptized for the dead person, but that was false doctrine then, false doctrine now. Amen. Every man, woman, and child who is baptized now, you have to get baptized for yourself. Amen. You can't ride into heaven on your mama's coattail. You've got to do it for yourself. Baptism and getting right with God is a very personal thing. Everybody who's alive now and wants to see God in peace, you're going to have to go through the water. The same way they went through it on Pentecost when 3,000 were baptized, you've got to do it now. And I don't care what theologian you hear, they can hop, skip around that. They can try to circumvent baptism, but baptism is essential. If it was not, why did God place it in the book of Acts? as that which was done on Pentecost, so there the precedent was set. So we know we got to do it. But there's nothing unusual about men trying to do their own thing. Uh, and, and for some noted theologians to even talk about baptism not being necessary. Amen. But we know what the Bible says. And I think if we stick with the Bible, we can, we can work this thing out. So one, we've looked at the baptism of John. We've seen the baptism of suffering. We've seen the baptism unto Moses. We see the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We see uh, the false doctrine of baptism by proxy. And then the baptism by fire. And I've heard folks say, well, you ain't been baptized until you baptize in fire. Haven't y'all heard that? 
Give me Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 11. Y'all have heard that. And I'm trying to tell them, y'all don't want that. I, 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 because you don't want to be overwhelmed in fire. Because God can light a fire that can't nobody put out. So y'all listen to me. And we don't want that. And so what they're laboring today is to help men in their stubbornness to recognize if you want to see God in peace, You've got to be compliant to his will. Yes, sir. Give me Matthew 3 and verse number 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Read. But he that cometh after me this is, is John, mightier than I. He that cometh after me, boy. Is mightier than I. Is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He will baptize you with Holy Ghost. That happened and on, with fire. That happened on Pentecost, didn't it? And with what? And with fire. That ain't come yet. Amen. You don't want that. It be, it's some folk who have preceded us in death and they in it not. Are y'all listening? But you don't want to be baptized in fire never. Are you with me? And we need our people to understand how urgent this is. That men and women come to obedience. Because if you don't come to obedience, the baptism in fire can be your destiny. Oh, you're not feeding me now. You know folk like happy preaching, don't they? <laughs> but you don't want the baptism by fire. Uh, because if you get that, number one, it can't be put out. Amen. It can't be stopped. Yes. Uh, can't nobody cool it down. Amen. Are y'all with me? Uh, and so we're trying to get men and women to recognize that hell is real. Yes, sir. And, and, and hell is eternal. And for sure, it's hot. And I've heard folk argue about whether or not here hell was a real place and all of that. And, and they argue uh, theologically whether or not uh, it's in actuality. I, let me tell you one thing. I don't know about all of that. But here's what I do know. I don't want no part of it. Hell, let me just park right here for a few seconds. <laughs> Hell is a place where the doors only swing inward. And, and, and Isaiah said hell had enlarged her sin. And the reason, you know, it's expandable. And the reason why is because so many folk are going in there. And I'm telling you, if you don't want to line up with God, there's room for you. It's room for you. It's room for you now. If you just insist on going. How long will it last? If it, hell is not like the penitentiary. Well, well, for every good day you do, you get a day closer to your sentence uh, knocked off. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We know about that, don't we? If anybody know about the jailhouse, it's black folk. Huh? But how long is hell going to last? How long is eternity? If a bird, if one tiny sparrow had the responsibility to move every grain of sand from off of the whole earth, but it could only fly one grain at a time from earth to glory, 
drop off that one grain of sand and fly back and get another grain and fly it back to glory. It's got to remove all the sand from every place on earth and fly it to heaven. Drop it off. Come back. And when that bird would have removed every grain of sand, eternity will have just begun. You don't want to mess with that. Baptism by fire. And if you ever introduced to it, it will be your acquaintance from now on. And you will never come out. Never. And so we recognize the urgent need to convince people about Jesus, the blood, the fact that he died for you and me, uh, and for folk who don't even like him, who shake their bony fist of rebellion in his face, but yet he died anyhow. So we see you don't want the baptism of fire. Revelation 21 and verse number 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. And he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers. Oh, monk, all of them lumped in there together. Sorcerers and Tea leaf readers, crystal ball gazers, uh huh, bone doctors, idolaters, liars, all shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. First one is when you lay prostrate right here. But then there's a second death. Uh-huh. A second death is coming. Uh, and, and, and this second death is permanent. Judgment is coming. And the second death is permanent to wherever. If you die outside of Christ, if you die outside of baptism for remission of sin, Wherever you close your eyes is where you will be from now on. There is no repentance in death. You can't get right with God over there. Uh, ain't no reconciliation over there. Ain't no grace over there. No justification over there. And so the urgency of it. And this is what we are attempting to communicate. Yes, I remember when I was about 12 years old, 11, 12 years old, and I was walking from a yard throwing a spear like Tarzan. You know how Tarzan throw those spears and things? And <laughs> I was throwing a spear. And uh, where the natives threw the spears, Tarzan didn't need no spear. Amen. And, uh, and I, all of a sudden it hit me. One day you don't have to die. It's it just out of nowhere, you're going to die one day. And, and then, as I mentioned this moment, my hair young and strong and hair jet black. Huh? <laughs> hair black as coal. Strong. Good hearing, good eyesight. But time. Solomon said, remember now thy creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Amen. Amen. Solomon talks about what time will do to the body and how the keepers of the house shall tremble the hands. 
and, and the strong men, the legs shall bow. Those that look out of the window will be dim. Grinders cease the teeth because they are thick. And so he gives us a picture of the body falling apart. And so that's why he said in Solomon, uh, remember now your creator. He, he wants you now uh, when you first start growing your goat teeth. Are y'all with me? That's when he wants. He wants you now when your little hair starts to bud on your little face and things. That's when he wants you then. Uh -huh. Little ladies, when you start to get a few curves here and there, amen, he wants you then go to work for God then. And I'm here to tell you as a witness, if you work for him early, he'll take care of you late. Where my witnesses at? Come on, y'all. Won't he take care of you? Won't God see about you? They'll have their part in the lake of fire, those who are disobedient. And then the most important baptism of all is the baptism for remission of sin. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. Yes, sir. We, we know that Peter told them on Pentecost to repent and be baptized. Every one of you, Every one of you for the remission of your sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the benefit and the blessing of baptism is that it lines us up right with God. It blesses us to the extent uh, that he gives us his Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter 5 and verse number 32. God gives his spirit, his Holy Spirit, to them that obey him. Amen. And so the immersion of the unsaved into water represents a picture of obedience. It is beautiful and aesthetically pleasing because it reflects a change in direction and it shows a man, a woman, a boy, a girl stepping into a new life. Yeah. You, you know, aren't you tired of what you've been coming up against? Right. Trying to fight the battle of life all by yourself? Yeah. I know that you're intelligent and you degreed and you work, you work, make six figures and you all of these things, let me tell you one thing, that doesn't mean nothing without God. Amen, amen. Uh, you got everything lined up right but him. You know, today we, we put a great stock, put great stock in jobs that have benefits. And, uh, and they say a job doesn't have any benefits, it ain't worth having, that kind of thing. Well, it, it, well looking if you don't have one, whatever, any kind of job worth having, you don't have one. But in preparation in life, if you buy a new car, you got car insurance. You can't drive it off the lot until you get some insurance. Isn't that right? You win. Now, you can go get a hoopty <laughs> and get some no fault. But we have our comprehensive coverage, don't we? Uh, if you get sick, you got health insurance. Obamacare, they're trying to get rid of that now. Yeah, but, but, but listen, you've got health insurance, right? Uh, and, and then those who are responsible have life insurance to leave something to your loved one. And so wise men of the earth all have these things. But the wisest men have an insurance that you can pick up on and benefit from on the other side. Uh, because life insurance pays the beneficiary, but you won't see a dime of it. They'll be fighting over before your body gets cold. But there is an insurance that every sensible and wise man needs, and that is to know that I have a home prepared where the saints abide. I've got my mansion, I've got my robe, I got my crown laid out because I made provision to send my timber up now. Yeah. 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 So that life insurance, the heart for the whatever prudential won't help you then. It'll help them back here, you, you know, uh, but, but it won't help you now. And so we need some Jesus in our plans, do we not? 
Amen. We need some Jesus in our plans. And so uh, it's a beautiful thing to see folk coming forward and putting Christ on in baptism. And you know, it's a decision you have to make for yourself. This ain't no decision mama and them make. This is your decision to get right with God because you're going to need him. You might not think you need him now, but you're going to need him in a minute. There's a story told to me by a gospel preacher. He's going on to glory now. But he talked about how he tried to convince this, this man to put Christ on. And so the man wouldn't obey and uh, finally got sick. You know you can get sick and don't get well. Yes, and so it's shown up. Uh, and and uh, you know, we see folk going and coming, but you can get sick and don't get well. And so uh, this man called him to the hospital. True story. Yeah, that's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the man called him to the hospital. And when he, the man, he, he tried to teach. And he called him to the hospital. And when he walked in the room, he had all this stuff hooked to him. And he looked at him. He said, man, I can't help you now. Look at you. All this stuff hooked to you. You know the monitors and things. You know today, most stuff they hook to you, the more it costs you. <laughs> he said, I know you can't help me now. But I just want you to go back and tell my friends I died and went to hell. <laughs> this ain't no game. It's nothing to play with. You don't have a one soul. Amen. Baptism. I won't be much longer. It don't take long for this here. Folk don't like too much talk about hell. And that's what I've discovered over the years. They don't want to hear no talk about hell. They don't want to hear about marriage, divorce, and remarriage. And they don't want to hear nothing talking about money. They don't want to hear nothing about that. Baptism makes us new. I, I remember when my, one of my granddaughters was born and she came into the world, she was new and you know her fingernails looked like they had been freshly manicured, even and everything and skin soft and flawless. I said, God, no, but look at this beautiful. And she's pretty right now. And, and she know how to get all up in my hard pocketbook and purse <laughs> thing. Oh, granddaddy, can let me go in there. When you go in, when you go into the gas station, let me go with you. <laughs> you ain't buying no gas. I don't know why you. <laughs> you already setting me up on, you know, on some, on some talkies. <laughs> but she was so new. And, but when you're born again as a child of God, it won't change your body, but it will change the relationship between you and God, because you're going to have to see him in the end. Therefore, any man that be in Christ Jesus is what? A new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so, for the adult, it's the opportunity to start over with a clean slate. Huh? You, you know, have you ever gone to buy a car and they wouldn't give it to you? Say, no, say, Mr. Green, your credit is, you, you look at it, a 220 credit score. And uh, you're trying to buy this new Mercedes and $500 down and, and that ain't gonna fly. And so, and so you have to go back uh, and, and work on your credit uh, and go back up there later. Your credit score now around 700 and you're going to put down 15,000. They're ready to talk to you now for sure. You know, but, but bad credit is a hindrance to progress. You can have bad credit with God, but baptism. <laughs> Baptism will reinstate and, and raise up your credits going, God. Are y'all listening? Huh? Amen. Amen. Because it might be some 220 credit scores in here now with God. 
We trying to get that fixed. We trying to get that fixed. And so we find that uh, baptism is stepping out of darkness into the light of Christ. It represents a first and necessary step in meeting the will of God. Uh, it's a necessary experience on the road to recovery. And God knows we need some recovery, don't we? You remember how you used to be before God called you? How ragged your life was? <laughs> Y'all remember that? Wait before, okay. I see all these halos around here. Y'all remember yesterday? Yeah. Hanging out all night long. Huh? Dragging in the church the next day with Jack Daniels all over your breath. You know, we can smell it, can't we now? Can't you smell it? You know, smoking marijuana. I'm messing with some folk now. Well, Keaton, you've been all right tonight, but don't start talking about my blunts and things. <laughs> you know, I don't know what you miss, mid-grade and strong. Some of the brethren know what I'm talking about. They, the ones who ain't saying amen, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but baptism is defined as the prophecy Joel talked about there would come a time when the Lord would pour out his spirit on all flesh. And then in Acts 2, uh, we see Peter mention that, that this is uh, that which Joel prophesied. Baptism is a compliance to the will of God. It is safety. It is being where you can get some help. Within this spiritual kingdom is peace, <laughs> safety, yeah. forgiveness of sins, yeah. reconciliation, yeah. justification, yeah. sanctification, yeah. to be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins, obeying God and becoming one of his own. Yeah. All of this made possible because of the suffering of Jesus Christ who died that we might live in God good. Let me tell you one thing. My life is better now than it's ever been. Amen. 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 Than it's ever been. God will give you everything you need and what you're leaving ain't worth much anyhow. Amen. The shedding of his innocent blood for the guilt-ridden sinner made it all possible. This is he who came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. It is the water that we access, the power of change, made possible by the shed blood of a sinless Savior. It represents a changed mind, a changed direction, changed destiny. It is to be delivered from the power of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of God. So therefore, we are suggesting that you would participate and experience this great thing called baptism. Oh, I remember the day when I was baptized, and I didn't come to Christ because I was doing bad. I was making good money, wearing nice clothes, driving a Cadillac, <clears throat> and for some that's all you need. But I was missing something. And, 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 and there was something missing in my life. There was a great void. I had all this pretty stuff, uh, you, you know, the car, home, fine wife, <laughs> all that. But there was something missing and I couldn't put my hands on it. I, I'm making this money. I can go to work dead broke and come walk away with several hundred in my pocket. Drive off in the coupe de ville. 
leaning. That's for my some swag. Got some money in my pocket, got the Cadillac, and lean. But I was still missing something. And, and, and I, I couldn't put my finger on it until I went to worship one day and heard the gospel preach. And, and I heard it, and I had been around the religious community. I had been in the Muslim movement. I've been there. Shrine of the Black Madonna, Methodist Church, Baptist Church, Holiness Church, Church Ryan the Cone on the Hill Church, all them. I had been to all these places, but when I heard the gospel preach, and, and it was so plain, wasn't nothing added to it. Repent of your sins. All right, I got that. Uh huh. Are you willing to confess that Jesus is Lord? Yes, I, I, I got that. I see him, Mr. Keaton, hearing what they did on Pentecost to be baptized, hearing where the church started on Pentecost. I, I said, it's got to be it. It's got to be it. And so I stepped out and put Christ on in baptism. And that world that I came out of, I was so glad to come out. I was glad to come out, having to look over my shoulders. You, you don't know if you're going to make it out of this dark room and there with these gangsters and things. And I wish y'all had time. I could tell you some stories. But you come back this afternoon, I'm going to tell you some stories. Y'all ain't been through nothing. You ain't been through nothing. But I'm telling you, that baptism, baptism in itself is obedience yes. but blessings come with it yes. do y'all not know when Paul was persecuting the church uh, and, and when an Ananias caught him and laid hands on him and Paul got baptized and the Bible talks about how something like scales fell off his eyes do you not know there are some things you can't see pertaining to God until you're baptized and then you can see? You can see then. You can't see now. Renounce at once your stubborn will. Give God a chance. Give him a chance. And he'll take care of you. Won't he do it? Raise your hand if God has brought you out of some holes. Keep your hands up if God has brought you out of darkness. Keep your hands up if you've been broken. God put some money in your pocket. Keep your hands up if your wondering daughter or son came back home. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. He'll do it. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm closing for sure. But the older you get, and the more you stay in the Word and develop your prayer life, you will see God work. You will see Him do some things you can't even explain. Won't He do it? Amen. Won't He do it when you're down, walk out to the mailbox, somebody send you a check you didn't know was coming. You're broke and look in the suit pocket, there's some money in the pocket, and you, come on, y'all. He's good. Eyes have not seen, nor has entered to the heart of me the things that God has prepared for them that love him. We're going to see it. You hold on to God. Stay faithful. Increase your prayer life. And watch and see how God bless you. This morning, we're going to give way to those who have had a change of heart as I've been talking. Can't make you come, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You'll be glad that you did. You'll be glad you rid yourself of that weight. You'll be glad you made that step forward to put Christ on it. it look, it don't matter what folks say. They're going to talk about you anyhow. 
you know, they, they, they talk about me now. But it's all right. I'm still going to be my own man. But, but when you come, you have to realize this. Everybody who comes along can't go along. You might have to leave some folk. You might have to leave some folk. You might have to quit your boyfriend. He ain't no good, no, huh? <laughs> joke ain't no good. You can't get him to come to worship with you. And if a joker, if a man loved you and respected you at worship time, he'll be sitting up in here with you. Wouldn't it? Well, I'm messing up somebody's game now. Listen. We're going to stand. And, and I know for those who have been baptized, it's a time of prayer. And can't God move in prayer? Can't he? But you've got to have the faith to recognize that when you talk to God, you're not talking to the air. He's inside of you. Those of us who have been baptized, we have that. We have it. Don't you be afraid to face anything or anybody. God is in there with you. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Feel no more. Rod and I stare. Come. God is right in there with you. We're going to stand for those who are ready to be immersed in water. For the rem Don't let nobody stop you. This is your moment. This is your time. You can walk in here, you're down, you can go out of it. Walk in here unsaved, walk out a Christian. You're going to have to leave here anyhow. You're going to leave here anyhow. If I lived my whole life and did God's will and there is no heaven or hell, what have I lost? Nothing. But if you live like you want to live, do what you want to do, ignore God, and you get over there and there is a heaven and a hell, what have you lost? Everything. We're going to stand right now. We're going to stand now. And you can just start walking if you feel the need. You can come on right now. Don't worry about what somebody's going to say. You know if they talked about Jesus, they'll talk about you. Let's come on down. Don't worry about folk. Everybody got their stuff. You know. Solomon said, there's not a just man upon the earth who doeth good and sinneth not. Some of the sweetest folk you know have sinned. And they sin every day.